Salala Experience Omen is known for its history in black magic spirits and jinns. Recently, I had the opportunity to experience this firsthand. My boyfriend, another guy friend, and myself decided to drive to Salala, which is an omen. Salala is a beautiful part of an otherwise dry, mountainous country. It known for the numerous waitas, waterfalls, incense trees, and many, many other attractions. Also, Salala is the only part of Omen that receives rainfall between June to September, and so it's green and luscious. They have a special rain festival during the monsoons, where tourists from all parts of Mideast gather there to cool down and unwind. It's a peak season for tourists, and you may find all hotels and lodges are full to the brim. Anyway, we decide to go there as being in Dubai, we don't see a lot of rain and greenery around us. So, on the 25th of July 2011, we all got ready and left from Dubai at 10pm approximately. My boyfriend took the longer route, despite my grumbling, though I knew a shorter route to get there, so after driving for more than 16 hours, we reached Shalala at 5pm the next evening. After dinner, we set about looking for a hotel or lodge that we could freshen up at and sleep the night. Being the peak season, all hotels were full by the time we found a hotel with vacancy. It was almost close to 9pm at night, and the hotel we found had just one empty room. Now, I don't want to name the hotel, as people here are very superstitious, and I don't want to get a bad publicity. Our room was on the second floor of the hotel at the end of a long corridor. It was a single room with twin single beds set far apart. After checking in and paying, we went upstairs and my boyfriend and myself chose the bed at the right side of the room and our friend took the bed on the left. Now, let me, let me be a bit specific and give you the layout of the small room. It was shaped like an alphabet L. And as I opened the main door, I have to walk through a small passage with the kitchen and the bathroom on my left. Then I walk into the bedroom. Our bed was opposite the passage where we had the clear view of the main door, kitchen and bathroom. There was TV on a small table there too, right near the foot of our bed. And my friend had a wardrobe near the foot of his bed and the air conditioning above him. My boyfriend had been driving non-stop for 16 hours straight. He was very tired and told him to shower first. Meanwhile, I set out his night clothes, unpacked some essential toiletries, and kept the remaining bags in the wardrobe. We had packed small, so everything fit perfectly. After my shower and other nightly routines, I climbed into the bed and was asleep before I knew it. Later in the night, I woke up with a start. My eyes just flew open, and I was keenly aware that there was something watching me. As I sat up, I saw a misfigure near the bathroom door. It was clear. My boyfriend was sleeping next to me, snoring loudly, I must add. I looked at it for a while and just fell back and went to sleep. The next morning, I woke up, and it was 11.30 a.m. in the morning. My friend was awake too and did not look as if he slept well in the night. After finishing our morning routines of brushing and showering, etc., the three of us were sitting on the bed while I packed. We were on our bed, he was on his bed, with his back to the wall and facing us. He started telling us that he could not sleep because the cupboard door creaked open and closed all night. It scared him enough for him to have a sleepless night. That moment, I remembered the misfigure, then told them what I had seen. Just then, the cover of the air conditioning, which was off by the way, flew across the room and landed near the TV. If the cover had to fall, it would fall on his bed, but this was like someone had forcefully thrown it across the room. We looked at each other and said, time to go, and took our things and left. We stayed in Salala for another day, but did not go back to the hotel. We thought it better we sleep in the car than face the wrath of the unknown. I should also mention that, while coming back, they listened to me, and our journey only took 12 hours. The Parisian Boy 
When I was 17 years old, I had the chance to go on my first big trip all on my own. I mean, I was pretty happy, because for me it meant going for the first time to Paris without any adult supervision. My mom had a friend living there, and his partner had an apartment just across the street from theirs, which happened to be unoccupied at the time, so they let me stay there for a few days. So every single day I would go sightseeing, walking and doing tour stuff, and then go to that apartment to sleep, and it was all wonderful and quiet. Until one night. I was in bed, sleeping, when I was suddenly awoken by a woman loudly knocking on the front door, and then all other doors in the hallway, asking desperately for help. Now looking back, this is the time when I realized this wasn't a dream, because the woman spoke in French. Even though I had been learning French for a few months, there was no way a teenage South American girl whose mother tongue is Spanish and who had no bigger contact with French language other than her classes would dream in the French language. So that woke me up and scared me quite a lot. I, I didn't dare open the door, and I didn't hear any other door in the hallway opening to let this lady say what, what had happened to her, and she left, still, still crying for help. So I tried to get back to sleep with no success, because I was really afraid. The apartment was a small studio, and no matter where you were in it, you could see the entire place from there. So I was in bed, from which you could see the front door trying to sleep again, when I hear a weird noise coming from the entrance. I turned my head to see, and I saw the lock on the door turning as if someone was entering the apartment from outside. I freaked out and thought of nothing better than to pretend I was asleep. I kept my eyes slightly open, but only about one millimeter, just so I could see who was coming inside, but make them believe I was actually asleep. I thought it was a robber, and I thought I would let them take anything they wanted. Whatever they wanted to steal, they could, because the only possible witness was sound asleep. Whenever someone opened the front door, it squeaked. So right after I saw the lock turn, I heard the door squeak, the door opened, and I saw... I saw a little boy walking towards me. Since my eyes were almost closed, I could only see a little bit. So I didn't see his face, only his body. He was slightly transparent, but as white as paper, and he was wearing a shirt and an overall, both between a very pale brown and green. He reached the bed and touched me, moving my body, trying to wake me up. He said in French, something like, Please wake up, you have to come with me, please, you have to see this. And he insisted for a few seconds. Since I was actually awake, I remember trying to make a decision. So what if I follow the boy? It doesn't necessarily have to be bad, but I didn't dare. I was too scared and continued to pretend I was asleep. So, after a few seconds, the boy left. I heard his feet on the wooden floor, and I looked to the door again to see the door closing and the lock turning again. I turned on the lights and didn't sleep for the rest of the night. I didn't turn them off during the remain of my stay in that apartment. A few days later, to be honest, it could have been a few days before, I don't quite remember, it's been 10 years since. My mom's friend and I were in his apartment, and he asked me to go down to the basement of the building with him to get something out of the storage room. His building is very old, so he showed me a list on the basement wall which had been written during World War II and had the names of all the people who lived there, and the names of the people who died during the bombings were crossed out. They had kept it there for all these years. This was around 2005 or 2006, which I found really, really creepy. So I told them about my experience. I guess then, this must have happened right after the experience, and asked them about the building where I was staying. I thought, based on his clothes, that the boy I had seen had died during World War II. But my mom's friend said, the building had been built in the 60s. He didn't know what was there before. Still, whenever I think about that experience, I, I feel chills down my spine. It was the closest experience I've ever had to a spirit. Thank you for taking the time to read this.
My vacation from hell. Greetings everyone again. This experience of mine took place over three summers, each while on vacation in the same place and is by far the most horrifying experience I've had to date. So, this will be a fairly long story. With that said, let's begin. It was the summer of 2009 and I just graduated from high school. My best friend at the time asked if I wanted to accompany him and his family on their annual family vacation. I would just been laid off from work and my next job wasn't going to start until the week after the vacation would end, so I agreed to go. The day arrived and we all hopped into his parents van and headed off. We were excited and decided to pass the time playing games, listening to music, and other typical things that guy our age do. It wasn't until we were driving down the dirt road to the house that my friend turned to me and said, Oh, by the way, the owner's husband, a friend of his family, is buried under the tree in front of the house. I was a little annoyed by this because not only did he not inform me of this prior to my agreeing to go, but he knew that I'd had experiences with things before. As we pulled into the driveway, I could see a small tree just off the side of the house. I take it that's the tree? I asked. He confirmed that it was, and we got out to unload the van. I took a look around to get an idea of what we were dealing with. A small log house that I was later told was hand-built by the late husband, a detached garage locked up tight, thick woods surrounding us, and the closest neighbors being a 10-minute walk down the road. Inside, everything seemed perfectly fine, with the exception of a hole in one of the walls of a bedroom. Once the bags were inside, my friend and I decided to go check out the back of the house. We opened the sliding door and stepped out onto the deck. There was a pool with a heater. Just off the deck at the base of a hill was a large tree with a lone rope and board swing hanging from a branch. We both chuckled and admired that it was kind of creepy. On top of the hill, we noticed a cabin. We walked up to it and took a look around. It was old and fairly run down. We walked in and it was just one room with a bunk bed and another bed inside with a door to the washroom directly across from the front door. We wanted to stay in there for a night, but my friend's mother didn't like the idea, so we ended up in the room upstairs. That night, as we went to sleep, I suddenly felt like I was being watched. Problem was, we were the only ones in the room and the door was shut. I shrugged it off and tried to fall back asleep. As I do this, I hear a voice ring through my head. Who are you and what are you doing in my house? I immediately sat right up and images started flashing through my mind of an older man in a plaid shirt and blue jeans standing in the doorway looking quite angry. I informed the man that we were simply here for vacation and that we were friends of his wife. This seemed to calm the entity a bit. He informed us that he keeps an eye on the house and the grounds around it and informed me that should we do anything to disturb his property, we would regret it. I informed him that we had no intention of disturbing him or his belongings. My friend noticed me sitting up and asked what was going on. I informed him of the man and what was said, but told him things would be fine. We went to sleep and the entity stayed and watched over the room. The next morning, as my friend went to look for a pencil in a drawer, he found a picture of the man exactly as I described him. The rest of the trip was uneventful. A year passed, and I was again invited to go on the trip. Again, I agreed to go. I figured all would be fine, given that the entity seemed okay with us. The day before, however, something odd happened. My friend and I were walking around our city when suddenly a feel of rush of wind and something that felt like an impact on my chest. I stopped walking and heard the voice of the man from the previous year, except he seemed scared and somewhat desperate. I asked what was wrong, still shocked by his presence considering that where we were going was about a two hour drive out of our city. They're after me, is all he would repeat. When I asked who, images flashed through my mind of a man standing in the cabin on the hill, screaming angrily, his face and overall skin tone being a dark crimson. 
Then another image, this time I was standing where the man would be, surrounded by darkness, with a cabin window in front of me in the blink of an eye, a cloaked shadowy entity appeared, pressing itself against the window with long bony fingers ending in sharp points. My friend now noticing that I stopped, turned and looked at me confused. I informed him of what I had seen, and we both agreed to look into it. Upon arriving the next day, we immediately went to the cabin. Upon arriving, the air became thick and smelled of decay. More images, this time, of a tall, slender woman in a long black cloak walking into the woods and a barrier of some sort. I turned to my friend and told him that I believe the cloaked figure died in those woods. He told me that it was quite possible and that the surrounding area was all swamp. I simply nodded and then informed him that there was still no answer from the entity inside though. It's at this time, he mentions that the house is located in the center of three cemeteries that are arranged in a triangular pattern. I had seen one of them when we had gone fishing. It was small and very old and didn't look like it was kept well. Either way, these entities seem to bound here. The male is trapped in the cabin and can't seem to escape, and the female seems to wander around the swamp and the cabin. I informed him. I then told him that we needed to stay away from the cabin. The rest of the week was uneventful. Another year had passed, and you guessed it, I was going back with my friend and his family. We figured everything would be fine. We figured that the entities couldn't bother us because they were bound to an area too far from the house. Unfortunately, we didn't know what we were about to experience. We arrived at the house, and I immediately noticed something was off. The air was still, and a feeling of emptiness surrounded the area. No, no birds chirped, no insects flew by. It was like everything had just disappeared. I shrugged it off, not thinking much of it. That night, as my friend and I went to sleep, the air became ice cold, and a feeling of dread took over. Images of something walking down the driveway flashed into my head while voices whispered over and over, he's gone. I couldn't make out what it was. It stood on two legs, but shuffled around like a zombie. It had a very physical feel to it, but was all shadow. I sat up in horror, unsure of what to do, as I'd never experienced anything like this before. When my friend noticed, I told him exactly what I saw and was still seeing. After what felt like five minutes of constant images, we heard the door of the van slam shut. The problem was, his parents were asleep. Everything started feeling normal again, and I fell, fell asleep out of sheer exhaustion. The second night of our week came, and my friend and I decided to bring a game up from the main floor to our room. After playing a couple of rounds, we realized it was getting late, and since we only had a couple hours of sleep left before having to wake up for breakfast, we decided to leave the game in the corner of the room and bring it down later. As we put on our pajamas, a voice was heard, except this time it didn't ring through my head. It was right beside me, on the other side of the door. A cold, raspy voice that sounded like both a whisper and a scream with an echo. It was a woman's voice, but what she said I couldn't understand. I felt a chill go down my spine as an image of a tall, cloaked shadow figure floating just outside the door flashed through my head. The cloak was ragged and torn, flowing as if in a gust of wind. The arms were abnormally long and slender, with, with fingers that matched. The figure had to be around 7 to 8 feet tall. My friend turned to me and said I looked pale. I asked if he heard anything, but he said that he hadn't. I could feel the heat being drained out of the room. I was trying to build up the energy to speak again. What do we do? My friend finally asked. Before I could answer, I noticed a small white wisp fly over the game in the corner of the room. I thought I was seeing things, so I stared directly at where it was, and again, it flew in a circular motion around the game we had brought up. I was confused, but in a moment of desperation, I turned to my friend and told him that we had to return the game to the main floor. He was horrified by the idea of opening up the door and seeing what was on the other side, but agreed nonetheless. 
We grabbed the game, and after some mental preparations, we opened the door and ran out. The house was empty, but darker than usual. The constant feeling of having something right behind you was felt by both of us. We returned the game to where it belonged and went back to the room. After a few moments, everything... everything was normal again. The third night finally came. We were still shaken up by our previous night, but hoped things would be better. My friend and I were playing video games together in our room when he asked if I could accompany him to the kitchen so he could grab some sodas for us. Given that I needed to use a restroom anyways, I figured why not take a break. So we went downstairs, trying not to wake his family. I went to the washroom, and as I finished up, I heard my friend started screaming. He ran to the washroom and pounded on the door. I told him that I was simply washing up and to come in. I was concerned because although he does get quite frightened, I had never seen him like that or heard him freak out like that in our whole 10 years of knowing each other. He was incredibly pale and shaking. I asked what was wrong. He informed me that he had gone to grab drinks when he noticed a cupboard door open under the sink. He closed the door and then turned around and saw someone standing outside the window to the back. As he saw that, he heard a loud bang and turned around to see the cupboard door wide open again. I tried to calm him down and decided to go take a look. This is an old house. The hinges could just be loose and maybe it was dirt on the window, I said, hoping to calm him down. I went with him to the kitchen, and sure enough, the cupboard door was open, so he walked me through everything he did again. He opened the fridge door, then closed the cupboard. It was at this point, I knew something was way wrong, because when he closed it, the door rubbed against the counter and needed force to close and open. Then I turned and saw this, he said, shining his flashlight on the window. Sure enough, there was mud and dirt covering the window, so I informed him that there was nothing to be concerned about as far as that goes. As I say this, we hear a loud bang, we turn around, and the cupboard door is now open, swinging back and forth violently. We run as fast as we can back to the room. Dude, what are you gonna do? He asked. I didn't know what to tell him. Things were getting worse by the night, and this was only night number three of our week. I think we have to tell your parents. I finally told him. He informed me that his parents are skeptics, and they won't believe us. I informed him that we didn't have a choice, and that if we didn't, things would get way worse, and that at least this way, we have a chance to be able to leave this place. So we went back down and woke up his parents. They both told us that it was nothing, and that we should just go back to sleep. My friend insisted, and so his father got up and took a look with us. My friend showed his father again everything that happened, step by step. However, this time, nothing happened. I was standing off to the side watching this, frustrated that we were being toyed with when suddenly I felt two hands grab my ankles. I stiffen in place and try not to call attention to myself. I look down and there's nothing there. However, I can still feel the fingers wrapped around my ankle. After what felt to be the longest five minutes of my life, I felt them let go. I immediately walked away and closer to my friend. His father, at this point, walks out of view of my friend's mother's and gestures for us to go see him. We walk over, certain we were about to be scolded. I believe you guys. These past few years, I've been noticing weird things going on too. I just don't want to say anything because I don't want to worry my wife. Go grab your stuff from the room. For the rest of this trip, I want us all in the same room. We were both shocked and relieved to hear this. We ran upstairs, grabbed our things, and... For the rest of the week, we stayed in one room. Nothing ever did happen after that night, and I never went back. From what I hear, the house had been sold a year later. I've mentioned this to a few people I know that have experienced similar things. Some claim that they were demons. Others believe it was a wraith. If you have any idea of what these could have been, please let me know.